so Joe is next. Joe is go, um, going to help us make sure that we as business owners are in the best state possible to weather any future storms. So over to you, Joe. Thanks, Julia. Um, yeah, just start with what I think my, my, one of my biggest takeaways from this whole lockdown is I think mine would be that small kindness goes a long way. Just, you know, smiling at people on your walks and receiving that back and um, staying in touch, people checking in with each other um, and you know, sending small gifts, things like that and cards and things in the post. I think that's been such an important thing for keeping people going. And I'm hoping that that's going to go forward where people are going to continue to appreciate it. And I think that's true in the business world as well. Just, you know, take the time out to um as george talking a lot about community there and i think you know bringing those small kindnesses into that and just people appreciating that more um, and it goes a really long way at the minute and we can kind of bring that into everything we're doing and with the knowledge of how much that's appreciated and how much we appreciate it hopefully we'll see that kind of continuing on so that would be a big takeaway for me from what's happened so far in terms of uh, three tips my first one would be looking at scheduling i think a lot of people obviously some people have had the busiest time yet you know depending on what they're going on with but for a lot of people um work life and social life and every other part of life has slowed right down and as we're coming out of lockdown i would say just be mindful of your scheduling rather than just kind of throwing yourself back into it full on without any kind of awareness if you're not careful about kind of building things back up gradually you're risking some burnout and as business owners that is a big risk if you get burnt out at this point you are going to be in trouble um so that you know there's lots to think about there's lots to do but start building your schedule up again gradually not throwing yourself into it 100 percent, and then going back to the gym and then doing you know 20 social events at the weekends and stuff you know focus on i would say making some time to prioritize what's important um and then you and the stuff that's fun as well so that's uh, you know giving you a bit more back from that and then doing that with you looking at your schedule in that way you're a lot like less likely to have that real burnout problem and fatigue and energy crisis um that you because you are going to need a lot of that going forward so i would say really thinking about the scheduling in terms of that is going to be useful and also a good time to kind of reassess is there anything that was in your schedule before that you don't need um, that, that you can get rid of that maybe wasn't serving you as well as you thought it might be and equally take it make sure you're taking the time to build in that self-care I think some people have been a lot better at that lately and making sure that doesn't get left at the wayside because you're going to need these energy levels um, up in the next few months so that would be the first thing uh, the next thing I would say is focus on the good habits and forget about all the bad ones that you've developed. We've all had some bad habits that we've picked up during this lockdown session. And if you're taking all that guilt um, and bringing it into the next period of time, that is that is going to be sapping away energy and um, and eating away at your mindset for what you need to be doing going forward. Um, and I would say just, you know, a lot of people in terms of like physical health, you've picked up um, some good habits, I'm sure, as well. So, you know, take, building in a bit more self-care, that's great. You know, going for more walks outside, brilliant. Are you doing more batch? cooking that's great focus on the good stuff and trying to keep that and forgive yourself for all the bad stuff just let it go if you spend a lot of time focusing on that you're not going to have energy to kind of get things back and just remembering you know if you like I know, i've heard of quite a few people really stressing about oh i've put on a bit of weight i haven't done as much exercise i would i haven't done these hobbies that everyone's been saying they've been doing and they've been developing don't worry about it you know we've all had to deal with something that is completely alien to us and just not stressing about that and just you've you You've taken the time to deal with it in your own way and you've got there that's great so not stressing about it letting that go and focusing on the good stuff that you can bring in and you're going to find that's going to again it's helping the energy levels and um, that's going to feel a lot better just going forward um and then talking about bad habits the last tip would be how to overcome your sugar addiction which most of us have now got <laughs> i think a lot of people have uh, have been indulging and things like that which is fine but if you're finding that you're actually now at the point where you're getting sugar cravings then that is not you, that you've developed a sweet tooth you have got a sugar addiction um so it's not i'm not saying by any means to completely cut that out you can still indulge as you need to but if you're getting sugar cravings you need to get that back under control because that started to have an impact on your blood sugar and the best way to do that is to take chromium so chromium is the mineral that our body uses to balance our blood sugar levels if you've had a period of time where you've had a higher consumption of sugar then your chromium levels are going to have dropped um, low chromium also has an impact on um, mental health and a bunch of other stuff as well so it is a good one to to make sure that your levels are really good on that um, taking that in a food source supplement i did a post on my uh, facebook this morning this is a, a little list 
list there of which brands are more likely to be food source but normally it will say food source or natural source on it um, if you're not having a food source supplement it's very hard to absorb you're wasting your money a little bit so making sure it's a food source supplement um, for chromium you can take that in a multivitamin mineral or just on its own just according to the packet and um, to taking that for sort of two or three weeks and that will help really reduce the, the sugar cravings and then you can get things back under your control a little bit and having some fruit in the house as well so you're reaching for and reach for that first rather than sugary snacks the fiber in the fruit fruit means the sugar from the fruit won't impact your blood sugar in the same way and uh then having a bit of protein in the mornings can make a bit of difference so i'll stop you getting any sugar cravings in the afternoon so tackling it all that way when you're not getting the sugar cravings you can have your snacking under your control in a way that you're happy with so there's a lot of people when they're getting the cravings they feel like it's not in their control they're struggling with it so it doesn't mean never having any sugar again it's about being in control of where you are with um, with your snacking and getting it back to a level that you're happy with and then that won't have such an impact in terms of chromium and your mental health and other things like that so those would be my three tips going forward thank you joe very helpful and of course i suppose that if we're not having those sugar spikes then we're able to maintain a more consistent approach to our day and achieve more so yeah thank you that's Absolutely. really helpful thank you i shall be reading your um article your blog on your <laughs> or your post on your facebook page later thank you for that. Okay.